Uh, Javon attacks. I mean, PSVR 2 is a great piece of hardware, but media never wants to give it the time of day. I want PlayStation to give it the time of day. This is not my fucking fault. When we read through the exclusive lineup of games for PlayStation VR 2, and there was what? Less... I would say it was maybe seven, but it was less than 10 by a long shot. Like Mm -hmm. PlayStation doesn't care about this thing. It's not me. It's not me sitting here saying, yo, support this thing, get behind it. And I know you want to be mad at me. I know there are great games on PlayStation VR too, but my argument is that those great games are on the meta quest three, which is a better system for playing these things wirelessly for a cheaper price point. Mm -hmm. Like we're talking about, it's competitors here and what PlayStation is doing with it. And they are doing nothing with it, which is fine. If they want to be done with it, be done with it. I don't care. But it's this thing where oh, it's the media. We're not supporting it. No, we're trying. I'm just pointing out the facts that they are doing a dog shit job of making you want to buy it. They're doing a dog shit job of supporting it and making it be an actual thing. Anybody should be investing their money in. All right. I- I'm not going to lie. Be sure I'm to visit PlayStation blog for more on the games you just saw. Pretty sad. As well as PlayStation.com for the latest on Days of Play. This global celebration runs through June 12th, with deals on PlayStation Store, great new content coming to PlayStation Plus, and much more. I'm actually re- really gutted. <laughs> A little bit emotional, actually. I love that game. But also Team Asobi, the ones who do Astro Boss. Like... I mean, if they bring out another game, like another Astrobot, which is most likely what they would do, and if it's not a hybrid or if it doesn't have PSVR 2 support, then that's, oh, that's, that's game over. That's game <laughs> that's over. Really that's, that's no more really red flags. Bad, that's yeah. the black flag. Well, why, the coffins why didn't Lord they, the um... Ladies and gentlemen of the supposed jury, I present to you my evidence that the PSVR 2 is fucked has been fucked for a long time but now the evidence is just overwhelming it's gotten to the point where i don't understand how you can disagree with this so many red flags and of course as you saw in the intro the biggest one the smoking gun the the flag that's not a red flag it's a black flag a death flag no astro boss for ps viewer 2 the next astro boss is skipping ps viewer 2 the ps viewer 1's mascot one of the best selling games on ps viewer 1 one of the most critically acclaimed games for PSVR 1 and it's skipping PSVR 2. Now what does that tell you? It tells you the Sony is not supporting the PSVR 2 headset and that's crazy to say when we're just 15 months into the life of PSVR 2. It's still a baby, a toddler at best. And Sony have already taken it out back and shot it, at least in the legs, maybe not mortally killing it yet because we still have third parties as I'm sure everyone's going to tell me in the comments that I'm being a negative Nancy a doom merchant these are the things I'm hearing you know pumpkins don't be talking like this because we still have aces of thunder to come we still have phasmophobia we still have wanderer we still have metro we still have you know ABC behemoth aliens great games that I'm looking forward to At least I hope they'll be great games, potentially great games. They could all be terrible, I don't know. Uh, But there's a lot of games I'm still looking forward to on PS4 2. But what a lot of people don't seem to understand is what happens when all those games are out. Because all those games that we just listed, those started development potentially years ago. Certainly before all this PS4 2 dooming and glooming from Sony. It's not from me. It is Sony that are dooming and glooming. PSVR 2, so don't take it out of me. I'm just reporting this as it is, all right? If you're a third-party studio, like Saber Interactive, for example, who yesterday announced that they have no plans for a PSVR 2 port of Mudrunner VR, if you're them, if you're in their shoes, you can't blame them, why would you? Because Sony themselves have no plans for PSVR 2 support, so they don't believe in us, why should you believe in us? They're not working hard to grow the Americas. I keep hearing there's 1.5 million PS Viewer 2s. I'm skeptical that it's even that high. I think it's probably closer to 1 million. However, let's just pretend that there is 1.5 million and that's a fact. That's not a big player base. You want to put money, and people seem to think ports are just like a one and done, like that you put 10 euro into a port and then that, that's it covered for PS Viewer 2. Ports can be very expensive. Getting the software to speak to the, you know, the 
PSV or the PS5 software development kit or whatever it is, it's not simply a flick of a switch. And then if that happens, once you get that done, then you get through Sony's certification process, which is apparently, as we've seen time and time again, that can be a bitch, that can be a costly endeavor by itself. And then you have to worry about the fact that you've got a maximum of 1.5 million million players in the player base. Obviously, you're not going to hit half of those. You know, we're talking about looking at Resident Evil 4's numbers. They got a tracker there. I think it's at like 110,000 players now. Of course, that's only for the players who opted in to be tracked. Uh, according to some, they seem to think that's 50%. So let's say there's 200,000 Resident Evil 4 players. Keep it in mind, that's a hybrid game. So a lot of people would, would have tried it out. They wouldn't have bought it specifically for PS Viewer and would have tried it out. And then think of the fact that you're not Capcom. You're not AAA. You don't have that budget. Instead, you're a small independent and you don't have the resources that Capcom have. You can't take the gambles maybe that they can. And it's understandable why Saber Interactive are not releasing Mud Runner VR on PS Viewer 2. The risk is too great, maybe. We've been ignoring the red flags for too long now. Firewall, say what you want about the game and how it released, but giving up after four months of a live service game, a first party live service game is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous from Sony and that should show you there their commitment to it right there. That alone, they were getting better. The game was getting better. They didn't care, they shut it down. The Amazon sale charts where it's been outsold 30 to one and have Sony dropped the price? I mean, yes, they have. Now, during the days of, or the days of sale, days of play? Yeah, days of play sale, but that's only lasting like for a week or two. That's not gonna really move the needle in any meaningful way. We've had other third-party studios, Rec Room developers, saying it's not financially viable for them to port to PS Viewer 2. Okay, we had the contractor showdown developer finally saying that PS Viewer 2 is on their to-do list. However, I will say, you know, to-do list is not confirmation. To-do list, I've met a to-do list where I have not done the things on my to-do list. Uh, so it's not exactly a guarantee, maybe likely, but maybe after this news, maybe that's less likely. Maybe they're going to reassess their to-do list now because Sony are not even supporting it. So the big concern now going forward is we are 100% reliant on third parties. 90% of those third parties, as they are right now, are Quest ports. So now we're at the point where we're saying to ourselves, well, all we have to look forward to now are Quest games, basically. Outside of Aces of Thunder, maybe. And even that game could go to Quest. It's running 19 native on PSVR 2, so maybe they can get that running on a Quest. And when we get to the stage where we're relying nearly 100% on Quest ports, we're going to have to be asking ourselves the question. I will, anyway. Maybe you've got a different answer. That's fine. But I'm going to be asking myself, why would I buy, why did I buy a PSVR 2 when I could have just bought a Quest 2 for $200 versus this, or 200 euro versus the 600 euro I put into the PSVR 2. I get all the same games, mostly. Of course, the year one for PSVR 2 was amazing. My library that I have already is amazing. I'm happy with this. I'm not gonna pretend that year one was bad and year two is looking solid. Not as good as year one, but solid. The problem is the year three drop off that I'm expecting to happen and year four, I just see it going off a cliff now. And it's gonna be hard for me to justify Okay, maybe I'm happy enough with year one that I'd justify it that way, and year two, you know, Madison, uh, Aces of Thunder, maybe that's enough for year two. But, you know, you're looking at the quest and you're thinking, okay, I've got the haptics, maybe some games I've got the DF or, but overall I'm playing the same games that they're playing on quests, I'm doing it at a premium, at a $400 premium, on a PSVR 2 headset where the main menu is flat, where we're treated as the ugly ginger stepchild of the family. Sony doesn't want anything to do with us. We're not being supported and uh, it's just bleak. It's absolutely bleak. There are still some slivers of hope. Like I've said already, the games I'm still looking forward to, that, that hasn't changed. I'm still looking forward to those games. So I still see value in keeping my headset around. I'm not going to sell it or anything crazy like that. And maybe the real heroes of PSVR, in my opinion, who are Capcom, maybe they'll continue to be a hero of PSVR and you know these new Resident Evil games we've been hearing about remakes of Zero and Code Veronica and apparently a Resident Evil 9 an open world one maybe they could all support PSVR 2 that could keep me happy as well even though it would just be like a, a Resident Evil headset at that point but whatever those are good games but in terms of ever expecting you know something like it wouldn't be so bad to drop Astrobot if you're going to replace it with 
another type of first party support. A Last of Us, a God of War, Twisted Metal, anything. But looking at all the studios now, and they've been shutting down Sony London, they've shut down, or they've cut Fire Sprite, they got rid of the director of the Horizon Call of the Mountain game. He's gone. Uh, so it just seems that you can't, I, I personally can't think of any of their studios who might be working on a PS4 or 2 game right now. Maybe Polyphony Digital are working on Gran Turismo 8, and maybe that'll have PS4 or 2 support as well. Outside of that, I just don't see it happening. And because of that, I find it hard to envision a world where PS4 or 3 happens, unless they go a completely different route and make it more in line with the quest, make it standalone, etc, etc. But that could be a, a different story entirely. Uh, basically, the future is bleak. PSVR 2 is fucked. And um, go ahead and disagree with me in the comments if you want. You're not really going to change my mind, I don't think. And don't blame me. Don't take it out on me. Take it out on Sony. I see a lot of people letting Sony away with this, which is the worst thing. People hand-waving away, it's not that bad. That's the worst thing you could be doing right now. Sony loved that. Sony loved to see that. They're delighted with the fact that most of the reactions to Astro Bot were people just being excited and happy. Maybe they were holding their breath that there might be backlash for there being no PS4 2 support, but there's so few of us that are actually complaining big time about it in any significant numbers. Like, okay, you go to the PlayStation blog in the comment section, and also there's a petition going around now as well, but unless you're in the hundreds of thousands, you're not really going to change anything. Sony aren't going to care. You're probably in the hundreds. You're probably in the maybe thousands at best, but not hundreds of thousands. So you can go ahead and stick up for Sony if you want to stick up for the multi-billion dollar corporation. That little guy, it's nice that you have their back while they're fucking us in the ass. So if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that. Anyway, that is it for this video. Uh, and by the way, this channel is dedicated to PSVR 2. It does not benefit me in any way for PSVR 2 to be failing. I wanted to succeed for the sake of this channel alone. So the fact, I mean, this notion that I'm benefiting off uh, like being a doomsday merchant or a doom merchant for PSVR 2, it's not, I'm not. I'm not benefiting. This is disastrous from the channel. Again, it's a tiny channel. It's not my livelihood. So, in, in, you know, it's not going to affect me too much in the long run. Uh, but because of that I can afford to be honest about the situation and the situation is fucking bleak. Thank you to my channel members Moz, Deadeye Dan, No One Knows, Plank71 Esports Commentator for Hire, Deej the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Pete Hawkins, Crumb, Superfly AF, Edify Till I Die, Lone Wolf The Or, Aced, Mr777, Geza, Phil Siap, Jin007, Brian Tam, Durbin Brown, Funky Sloth, Dante Bruce, Gamecat Photo Nutter, Elephant Trap, Jeremiah, Mr. Tortoise. Thank you very much for that continued support of the channel. I really do appreciate it. Don't worry, I still plan to cover PSVR 2 games as long as there is PSVR 2 games to cover. I'm not really going to go anywhere anytime soon. There's still going to be touch and tips every Tuesday, tomorrow night, there'll be another one. And uh, that podcast dedicated to PSVR 2. And I'm sure myself, Moz, and Mr. Jackpot are going to have a lot to say about the stays of play. Uh, particularly the big news. Uh, but also we'll be talking about the cool news that we got from the stays of play, which was Behemoth and Aliens. Uh, or Alien, I should say. Uh, anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.